I've often thought that the sailing lifestyle doesn't make our lives better. It just makes our highs higher and our lows lower. But spending over two weeks at sea crossing the Atlantic Ocean, I found that my emotions completely lost the plot. I'm just outside of my comfort zone. Our first couple days were pure joy. The days that followed brought fear and anxiety like I have never known in my life. Definitely like the strongest winds I think I've sailed in. And here on the final stretch, I feel like I can experience deep contentment and wild anxiety in any given day or even the same hour. I'm so at an all-time low right now. And although the strongest winds and biggest waves are probably behind us, we've still got another week to go before we make landfall and complete our very first ocean crossing. Okay, chef, what's on the menu? This is a cheesy puerco asada burrito. I think we all wanted a hot meal in the evening. Yes. It's been a minute. And a beautiful sunset. Did you do that too, Steve? Yeah, I called in a favor or two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How's it taste, buddy? Very bueno. Oh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. There you go, Jen. Sailor's delight. Early the next morning, just as I was coming off watch, we got a no rudder response alarm and the autopilot completely stopped working. Now we've had this issue a lot in the past and I thought I had fixed it way back in North Carolina. But in the past, the issue was very intermittent and typically resolved itself once I reset the autopilot. But now for the first time, the autopilot would not engage at all, no matter how many times we reset the system. I'm so at an all time low right now, you know? Yeah, I've got some ideas on what it could be, but like I don't know anything for certain, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just so, I'm so done, you know? Like I was literally on my way down to go to sleep because I'm like tired because I just got done with watch, you know? So you were thinking about heaving too to take a look at it? Yeah, I mean, getting you to hand steer isn't the worst thing, sure. you know? And that is something I've thought this whole time is like, if we had to hand steer, we can, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't think it'll come to that. We've got it to work in the past and mm -hmm. it's done this before, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Let's try it one more time here. Oh, it took over. Was it? Yeah. That time it actually did engage for a brief period and then it disengaged. But somehow electricity isn't getting fed to that coil. So basically there's a coil that activates kind of like a solenoid. So when it gets an electric charge, it basically makes it so that the motor on the autopilot actually pushes and pulls the actuator that turns the boat. And so what happens when we get this no rudder response alarm is the, the coil isn't powering up. And so you can hear the motor on the autopilot running, but it's not pushing or pulling the rod. So I think it's just an electrical issue somewhere between the computer and the coil on the unit, that clutch mechanism. Now, because I've attempted to fix this issue several times in the past, I'm pretty familiar with the system. And I knew that the weakest point in the coil circuit was the connector inside the autopilot computer. It just always seemed very precariously connected to me. So before I started just taking things apart, I figured I would just try and shove the wire into the computer and see if I could relieve some of the tension on the connector itself. Okay, bud, can you give that a shot? What angle do you want it at? Uh, wind, 65 wind. degrees. Sounds like it's working. Well, that's good so far. Yeah? What'd you do? No alarms or anything? Not yet. And it's holding, you know? I, I literally just wiggled a wire. <gasps> <laughs> so... Well, let's hope that fixes it. You know? Yeah. Now, obviously, wiggling a wire isn't a permanent fix, but I was able to zip tie the wire in place so that it wouldn't wiggle loose over time. Also, now that I know that this connector is the culprit behind the issue means that it'll be really easy to do a permanent fix once we get to a safe harbor. All 
right, well, I've kept an eye on the autopilot for the last hour and a half, and uh, we haven't had any alarms, so that's really exciting. <laughs> Okay, so we were like rushing along in like 18 to 20 knots of wind, and then what just happened, Steve? We stopped. <laughs> Literally, we just went from seven and a half knots of boat speed to 0.3. I've never come to a complete stop like that while sailing before without hitting something. We actually just slid backwards down a wave, <laughs> which is another first. Well, we're gonna turn lemons into lemonade, and we are gonna go for a swim. Isn't that right, Steve? That's right. It's it's. It's still only blowing like five knots, so we douse the head sails, we're gonna douse the main, and hop in. You excited, Jen? Oh, I am really, really excited. <laughs> nice dive. I think maybe my favorite moment of the entire crossing was getting to swim smack dab in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, knowing that there were thousands of feet of water below me and thousands of miles to the nearest land. It was a little bit terrifying and completely exhilarating. There's wind. We have wind. All right, buddy. End of day 27. Yeah. <laughs> I just woke up and like had a huge headache. And with the motion, it was really hard to fall asleep. And I was really hungry. <laughs> so I made myself like four meals today. I mean, I've been very impressed by how well you've handled this, bud, you know, with being a pregnant lady and whatnot. Yeah. <sighs> Thank God for pretty sunsets. They make it all worth it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jen, can we give you the sous chef? Ah, the little sous chef. <laughs> so, as you can see, there is now plenty of wind. We are back in it, which is great. And for the next five days, at least, looks like we are gonna be sailing hard on the wind. But sailing hard on the wind is its own challenge in and of itself, even when it's in moderate winds. We'll see how it goes over the next couple days because I think it's definitely going to get windier and I think the waves are definitely going to get a little bit bigger. Anyway, so it's a beautiful evening and we're just going to enjoy the good weather while we've got it. All right, good evening or good morning. What time is it? It's 2 a.m. I've just been sort of thinking about kind of the large swings in mood that I've had on this trip because I've had some moments where I'm really like enjoying the beauty of like being far out here and like still having these sort of gifts, like these moments of calm, and these moments of like good, perfect sailing. But then I also have had these moments of like sort of despair, which is not my normal MO. During this trip, with all the things that have kind of been going wrong and breaking the volatile weather, it's really affecting me at times, more so than I feel like I've ever felt. I'm starting to realize that like, I think the anxiety is getting to me, and I think the anxiety is really coming from the fact that I'm just outside of my comfort zone out here. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, you know, a part of me is telling myself that I need to, like, create a buffer between when something goes wrong and, and when I emotionally react, because I probably can fix it. And if I can't fix it, then we probably don't need it. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my spiel for the night. But it is a beautiful night tonight, and I am really enjoying this watch. You have so much time on a passage, and a lot of the time you're busy and you're kind of managing the sails and everything, but there is a lot of downtime. And so it's interesting because it's almost like being a kid again. I just dive into these thought bubbles just to kind of pass the time. And sometimes it happens involuntarily too. I'll just be like, I'm gonna think about my sister right now. And then I just look into the ocean and then have these like crazy, like watching a movie and all these memories with her, and just thinking about her. And then I just kind of do that with lots of different topics, kind of like cycle through things that I enjoy thinking about. It's something that I don't really get to do that often everyday life. It's just like meditative, you know, you just dive into your own mind. It 
it is getting very bumpy out here. <laughs> it looks like the next like day and a half might be stronger winds than we would like being hard on the wind. They're calling for like 20 to 25 knots tomorrow. Right now, I'm cleaning up the floor because we try to keep windows and hatches open when it gets calm, but then when the wind picks up all of a sudden and we take a bunch of green water over the boat, it goes into the boat. It's definitely getting sporty. Um, and there's like, you know, very particular challenges with sailing hard on the wind offshore for long periods of time. You know, it's hard to get around. You kind of got to like mentally map out like where you're going and how, and you just, you don't move unless you absolutely have to. But Oso's really good. His sea legs, man, he is impressive. Oso, come up here. Yeah, good boy. With the wind picking up, we decided to put two reefs in the main, and Steve and I went forward to tidy up the mainsail to reduce as much windage as possible. All right, so yeah, we are healing over good, banging into these waves. Desiree's about to cook breakfast, so I'm actually gonna fall off a little bit. You know, it's a bummer because it means that we're not going toward our destination for a little while, but I mean, there's no way we could cook in these conditions otherwise. All right, one down, three to go. All right, well, it's still rocking and rolling outside and I'm feeling pretty seasick. But as I was kind of hanging out with Jen and just chatting, we found ourselves fantasizing about what food we're craving. And so I was like, I do have some brownie mix and cookie mix way in the bottom of this compartment, which you'll have to go dumpster diving for. Apparently I am in an abusive relationship with the boat. Here's today's sweet gnarly injury. However, it's all in the name of brownies, so it's well worth it in my opinion. Check back in 35 minutes, see how we're doing. Thank you, chef. Oh. It is ribeye, sauteed potatoes and string beans that have been done with lemon and thyme, and sauteed mushrooms for our girl Jen, who really loves them. We bought this on our provisioning run when we were looking at getting ready for like what our halfway woo meal would be. <laughs> and this is past halfway, but we're all still feeling very woo. Dang, woo, check. <laughs> it's funny, we fall off, and like one of you guys cooks this delicious meal, and then I get to just like <laughs> pretend like we live in this civilized world of like calm seas and good food. And what's for dessert, Jen? Oh yeah. Brownie! Right. Thanks so much for making this. <laughs> Steak and brownies. Today's a win. <laughs> as soon as you said, you know, we have brownie mix where? I don't care where I have to go to get it, I will get it. <laughs> Good morning. So today is day three of sailing hard on the wind and it's just awe-inspiring to watch Atticus, our home, just pushing through these waves and pushing into the wind and just doing it non-stop and making progress. It's really incredible to see. In a way, the boat is defying nature, but in a way, it's not. It's like working really gracefully with nature to accomplish something that seems like it shouldn't be able to do. It's a relatively comfortable ride at this point with the exception of healing over a lot. And I'm just so impressed with Atticus too. There's all these little things that broke on this trip, but the boat has performed so well in like so many different conditions it really just blows me away it looks like the latest forecast is saying that this will be our last day sailing hard on the wind it has been an interesting phase of the trip I'm glad that I've done it now to be able to know like oh you know what as long as it's under 20 knots we can go a day or two hard on the wind and it's not a big deal it's been a good experience for that reason so funny how the sea state can affect my like mental well-being because when we're hard on the wind and the seas are confused and the winds are swirly it just feels like this bubble that you're in is like a prison but 
as soon as the winds calm down and everyone kind of emerges from their hiding places because everyone's just trying to like hunker down and conserve energy, then it feels like this like little bubble of opportunity and like, you know, it's fun to look around and just kind of get lost in your thoughts and realize you're disconnected from civilization and society. are what have prevented us from sailing directly towards our destination. So we've sailed up just about to the center of that high pressure system, where we're on like the southern edge of it. And so now that we're in an area with really calm winds, we can actually turn directly towards Horta and motor pretty much due east because there's very light winds here and because the swell and waves are really, really low. And hopefully in about 24 hours, tomorrow morning, we're supposed to get kind of to the right hand side of that high where most of the winds come out of the north. And that's gonna give us a really good wind for sailing the rest of the way to Horta. Now the major challenge here is gonna be keeping an eye on our fuel consumption. Is the goal is to use our fuel when we really need it, just to like punch through those areas that would take us a long time to get through if we didn't have the motor. just got all of our sails ready completely on my own without having to wake up Jordan. Getting super confident in this boat and my ability to maneuver it, which feels really good. Yes, how are you feeling, buddy? Feeling good, feeling very accomplished. 
feeling very excited to be in like a stable anchorage or at a dock. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> I have no words for once in my life. <laughs> now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> we did it, guys. We did it. We made it. For days now, I've been longing to get off of this emotional roller coaster and travel back to the world of safety and stability. But now that I'm moments away from escaping this alternate universe, a part of me knows that in the not so distant future, I'm going to long to come back to this place where beauty and euphoria meld with discomfort and an acute awareness of my own mortality. It's as though for some reason I feel the need to cycle back and forth between safety and danger, anxiety and security, comfort and discomfort. The whole thing is one giant contradiction, but there's one thing I do know. As excited as I am about leaving this alternate universe behind, I know I'll be coming back soon. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's episode. I wanted to take a couple of minutes to thank some of our newest patrons. So to our newest Bosun level patrons, thank you so much, Skip Richards and Brian Katz. Moving on to our newest Yachtmaster level patrons, a huge thank you to Beth Sennett, Bob Cochran, Crystal Limerick, Robert Colvin, Steve Morrison, SB Vent Despoir, and Tim Latouche. And finally, to our newest deckhand level patrons, thank you so much. Boyd Cobb, Nancy Burge, Tim Kennedy, Blake Hart, Ray Midget and Karen Kuchera, Mark Winger, Gair Gurick, Christina and Steve Pitsley, Obi and Lori Alvarez, and Amy Calvert. So to our newest patrons, or if you've been with us from the very beginning, thank you so much for all of your love, encouragement, and support. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll catch you next week.